So if you have a robot and you want to do navigation with the robot, the first thing you need to do is actually to get or to pure chase a laser scanner. But here there are several available devices in the market and there are a lot of characteristics that we need to understand and there are a lot of features that will help us making the correct decision about which laser range finder is appropriate for our applications. So for any laser scanner, these are the main characteristics that you need to figure out before selecting it for your application. First of all, a laser scanner is characterized by a minimum angle and a maximum angle. So this is how a laser scanner would look like. It will send a beam of laser okay over a certain angle and here we have the minimum angle and the maximum angle and the total field between the minimum angle and the maximum angle it represents the field of view and different lasers have different field of views and of course this will impact their cost their performance and so on as you can see in the picture the laser is going to send several laser beam from the minimum angle to the maximum angle and you can see here we have separate beams and there is an angle difference between one beam to another okay and this angle difference is is called the angle increment and this represents the angular resolution of the laser range finder okay also the laser scanner is characterized by the time increment which is the time between the measurements we're going to send one measurement and then another one and the time between two measurements is called the time increment and this time increment is different from another time that is called the scan time which is the time between two scans and one scan it means sending all the different beams okay so this is one scan and then after getting all the measurements we send another scan so we have the time increment and we have also the scan time that is the time between two different scans a very important characteristic of the laser scanner is the range and for this we have the minimum range and the maximum range so the minimum range it represents the minimum observable range and for example some sensors are not able to see objects that have a distance lower than for example a certain range for example some sensors cannot see objects that are in a distance lower than for example a meter or half a meter now this is this is a characteristics that may differ from one laser scanner to another and a more important characteristic is the maximum range. Some sensors are able to see, for example, only 4 meters away. Some other sensors, they can see 10 meters away or 20 meters away or 30 meters away. So the maximum range will depend from one laser scanner to another. For example, if you work in an indoor environment, in this case, maybe 4 meters will be sufficient. However, if you use a 4 meter scanner in outdoor environment, it will not make much sense because in outdoor environments, spaces are larger and longer. So usually we use 20 meters or 30 meters and of course this will have major impact on the cost uh, the longer the range is the higher the cost will be and of course the laser will return as the list of ranges so you can see here every laser that is going to propagate in the space is going to bounce back whenever it reaches an object and then when it bounces back the laser is able to estimate the distance to that object from this laser beam okay so here for every laser coming back we're going to have an array that will contain the list of ranges and then in ROS we can actually collect the list of ranges and then process them for example to build a map or to avoid obstacles or to perform navigations and so on and finally we have also the list of intensities coming back from the laser scanner so this is a, an illustrative example uh, for example of a laser scanner that will hit obstacles and then we will see that every laser beam is going to represent one range so at the end in rust later on you will see that we can have an array of ranges and every range for example this is the minimum angle will return 1.2 and then the angle just after that we return 1.3 and then 2.0 and so on depending on the value that bounces back from the laser scanner after it hits an obstacle okay so the distribution of ranges may look something like this we can collect it using ROS using software APIs and then we can process this information in order for example to to avoid obstacles or build them up so something very important to notice is that the front direction is the angle zero and then you can go to the right side you have the minimum angle and to the left side you will have the maximum angle for example here we have a field of view of 90 degrees between zero and minus 45 and zero and plus 45 in the next video i'm going to present the most popular and common laser range finder available in the market